Welcome to the slopes today. My name is Klaus, and you'll be joining me as we learn about what slope is. Come on down the mountain, grab your skis, and let's go have a hot cup of cocoa at the bottom. Thank you, Klaus, for that awesome introduction. Today we are talking about what is slope, right? So this is our introductory, introductory lesson to what slope is. We're going to join Klaus on the mountain later, but let's dive right in and see what we're doing. So we got on our ski lift, right? We're going up the mountain. Today I will be able to define slope and find the slope of a line by looking at a line on the coordinate plane. That's our objective today. That is the mountain we are trying to navigate down. So let's start going down the mountain. So first we want to do our math vocabulary, right? So you want to go ahead and pause the video and write these down. We're going to be defining three different words before we get into them. The first one being slope. And slope is the steepness of a line. We're also going to be using the word rise. Rise is how far a line goes up and down. And run is how far a line goes over. So either right or left, right? So think about rising up and down and running left and right. So we need to rewind and remember something that we learned all the way back during our ratio lessons. Anytime you put equivalent ratios onto a corner plane, equivalent ratios will form a straight line. If you don't take anything else from this, please take this thought right here. Equivalent ratios, when you use a scale factor in your unit ratio to help you fill, fill out your order pair chart and our ratio chart, when you graph those, those will form a straight line on a coordinate plane. This is so important because this is the beginning seed to understand one of the major concepts of algebra, which is slope. So here's the same line from that previous ratio lessons that you graphed, right, using an XY chart and using your scale factor to find equivalent ratios. How do we determine how steep this line is. How do we determine the slope of this line? That's the question we are trying to answer today. So our key thought, right, we're at the top of the mountain, our key thought that we're learning up here, which is to find the slope, you look at the ratio between the rise and the run. We learned in our ratio lessons that equivalent ratios, when you graph them using an ordered pair chart, are going to make a straight line, right? When you use that same scale factor to find the equivalent ratios, that will make a straight line. So for our previous graph, for every three that it went up, it moved over one. Or for the rise, the rise was three because it, it rose up three, and then it moved over one. So to write that, we're going to use our ratio toolbox to write it at to look like a fraction, even though it's not really a fraction, right? We can write it to look like a fraction. And we're gonna say that slope equals rise over run, right? And so this is our the way that we can find out our slope. We can look at the rise to the run. So let's take a look and let's go back to our previous graph. And we see here that it started at one, three, right? And it one, two, three, went up three, right? The rise was three and it went over one and then went one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. So our slope, if we wrote it right as a fraction would be three, two, one, or for every three, it went up, it went over one. Now three over one is an improper fraction, even though uh, we're talking about ratios here. So we could say the slope of this line is three. The steepness of it is 3 to 1, which is just 3. Okay, so let's take a look at this line now and try to find the steepness of this line. Now, you want to find something, um, you want to find a point where it's kind of exactly on the coordinate plane grid, right? So we're going to start actually for this one at 0, 0 because it starts right there. And then our next point on our line that is directly on the coordinate plane at an ordered pair without having to use decimals or fractions would be right here at 1, 5, right? And so let's look at the distance from our first point to our second point. So it goes up or rises 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for every 5 that it moves up, it moved over one. And so the ratio between the rise and the run is for every five that it moves up, 
it moved over 1, so we would say that our slope was 5, right? And so when we're looking at the slope, we're looking at the ratio between the rise and the run. How much does it go up and down versus how much does it go over? We are building on our scale factor and equivalent ratio knowledge to now take this to finding the slope. Let's take a look at another one that's a little bit different. So you can see this line is a little bit flatter. It's not as steep, right? And we want to know, okay, what is the uh, slope of this line? So again, this one actually is really nice to us. It starts right here um, at 4, 4. And our next point that crosses over perfectly to a two at an ordered pair would be 7, 5. And so for every one that it moved up, it moves over 1, 2, 3. So we would say that our ratio is for every one that it rises, it moved over three. And so our slope for this line is actually just going to be a fraction, and that's okay. It's going to be one third. Now, if you notice, when the rise was smaller than the run, right, we were able to leave it as a uh, ratio, but written as a fraction, and we didn't have to change it into a whole number. Now, previously, our line was steeper when the rise was bigger than the run, and we actually were able to divide that and just write it as a whole number. So hopefully you're starting to see some of the patterns here where these fractions that are um, normal fractions, not improper fractions, right, are going to be a little bit uh, flatter, and our, mix, or, sorry, and our improper fractions or our whole numbers are going to be a little bit steeper because again it's the ratio of the rise to the run. Okay let's take a look at one more and so this line is actually a little bit different because you can see that previously our lines were going up and they were going up but a little bit flatter. This line seems to be going down when you look at it compared to our previous lines from our other questions. So if we start again, let's just start at the beginning of our line because we have our ordered pair, right? And we're starting at 213, right? And our next line that crosses over perfectly seems to be right here, okay? And so now we're not actually going up, we're going down. So for every one that it goes down, it went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So for, for every one it went down, it moved over six to the right. So for this one, we're going to go down, which means we're going to be negative one. Uh, and our ratio is negative one for every six over or positive over, right? And so our slope for this line is going to stay a fraction, but it's actually going to be negative one six. So when you look at it, if your slope is negative, that means your line is actually going to be descending, whereas if your slope was positive, it was ascending or going up. Hopefully you have enjoyed this lesson by Instructed Beats with our friend Klaus doing our awesome introduction. Please check us out at Instructed Beats Official. You can check out our slope song. You can follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Thank you so much. Klaus and Instructed Beats, out!